or something new. So it's been a while. I'll be uploading more videos and I'll be doing some of these with Ben. That's and right. he'll quickly explain a bit what he's doing, why he's, why he's here. So I give you 20 seconds. So, uh, so I'm planning a big trip with my motorcycle like for nine months and uh, I want to modify it a little. So I want to make a rally style fairing yeah. to put the set the navigation on it and uh, some uh, extra uh, controllers. Yeah. But so the dashboard is ready and now you're yes. preparing the fairing and that's what we'll, we'll be doing today. Yeah, and I want like to... in a few next days. We'll be trying to upload quite regularly. Pretty hard to pronounce. <laughs> yes. uh, we're Dutch, we're Dutch. Yeah, so normally we're Dutch. So, normal speaking we need to see how good. But now we're going to try it in English, so be mild with our English. Uh, it's a bit new for us. Um, so yeah. At least for me. Yeah. yeah. So, Bert, how is your trip? going to look like? So I will be gone for nine months um, and I'm going to the Himalaya with my bike so I'll do a, a lot of off-road riding so yeah. this is why I want like a real decent front fairing and some new headlights. Yeah. Um, and That's also probably why we'll be adding Kevlar as well to make yes. it like, more resistant to... Because probably I will crash, <laughs> uh, I'm not a pro That's rider. Enough. Um, so it needs to be sturdy and this is why carbon fiber and kevlar will be I think a good choice instead of fiberglass or just some plastic um, and you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook I'll post more regular, regularly I'll add his, uh, his tag down below so you can find it in the description yeah. and uh, make sure to follow him because I think he will be posting like really cool pictures and so on on, uh, on Instagram and I'll be following his trip as well so uh, best of luck on your trip Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so I uh, just removed it from the bike and as you can see it still needs some sanding um, but overall I'm quite happy with the uh, result. Um, so could, yeah. you, could you maybe explain like how did you do the symmetry for, uh, for the part because I think like most people this is like the most difficult thing in, in shaping pieces. Yeah, mm. true, true. So first I, I put some lines on it on the rough polyurethane foam blocks and I, I made a grid so to make it perfect sym symmetrical and then I cut straight flat surfaces out of it to have uh, and to, to be easier to measure and, and after that um, I put all the roundings and uh, um, softening the edges on it um, and when I was satisfied with um, with the shape, I put some polyester and uh, fiberglass from these composites on it to have a hard finish. And so that's like the regular laminating uh, polyester true, resin. Yeah, yeah. And then like it's it's pretty cold now in Belgium. So how, how did you do like with the the MacP hardware? What's the percentage you used for? Um, yeah, for this? I had some issues, so I needed to use a um, infrared heater to to harden the, the polyester because I use only like two, three percent, so that's a normal yeah, dose. that's correct. But because it was that cold, uh, I needed to put some additional heating on it. Yeah, so it's, it's just like a fiberglass cloth, uh, so the chopped strands? Yes. It's like around 100, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. just uh, the regular, the fine math, the, and it's easier to, uh, to shape it, and then uh, a polyester putty to, to even out all the bumps and to make it a smooth <laughs> surface. Yeah, that's really, I'm pretty jealous about <laughs> your, uh, your skills on, uh, <laughs> on doing that, because that's like my weak spot, uh, like adding bondo or, uh, or yeah, fillers. Yeah, but we, we, uh, we had some training together, because uh, a few years ago, like five years ago, I think, we had a big project together, right? We, yeah. Um, we yeah, I was like really struggling and then Bert, <laughs> so he helped me out and now I'm, uh, I'm a bit more master at it. And so like the, the basic shape, it's made out of polyurethane blocks, yeah, I guess. Hard yeah, hard polyurethane foam blocks. And so yeah. that's like foam blocks they use in insulation for houses yeah. and um, it's like a low density foam, I think. It's yeah, it's, it's quite easy to, to shape. Uh, it's pretty cheap as well. Yeah, it's super cheap and if you, if you see it's, it's quite see soft, the off. it's quite soft so it's really easy to sand and to shape. But because it's so soft, soft, you can't use it for making a mold and you need to put the hard uh, polyester coating on it. Yeah, okay, and so you shape it by like sanding or you first cut off some pieces and then you, 
you sand it flush and then you add the fiberglass. Yeah, it depends a little. Sometimes you shape it by hand. Sometimes you you cut with an iron saw. You cut some parts of it. Okay, and then with some with some woodworking tools, you can you can file it down with like a really coarse uh, uh, file. Yeah. You can shape the final uh, form. Yeah. Yeah. The tools. I'm switching like all my tools to compressed air uh, because I like it more. It's. Is like it better or? For me it's like more about uh, carbon fibers to the dust. Like I wrecked like six Dremels last yeah, year. Yeah, you told me. And uh, for me that was enough, so I switched everything. So I'm s gradually switching everything, like my sanding machines as well. I mostly buy the cheap ones because um, anyway, so they, they die anyway. Even, even if you buy like a Festool, um, they will die with the carbon fiber dust. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like... Quite electric. abrasive or... And, uh, yeah. 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 And um, that's like the most common problem with uh, sanding carbon fiber. So now for the tool. So um, I just made this, so it's like very practical to find everything. So very important, like uh, safety tools. Like this is the full face mar mask from 3M. I've used many of them and this is for me the best one because it's like the safest option. Um, for the tools here, I'll be using uh, 3M rotary um, tool. So this is a pad, 75 millimeters. I like this because it's like quite small to go into all the details. Uh, and so this is air powered, um, yeah, yeah. just to avoid the problems with electric parts. So all the sanding papers are here. Um, what sanding paper? Like you should check. Um, Oh, you have a whole bunch of yeah, it. Yeah, so um, I've used two brands. I'm now switching a bit more to Mirka. So they are very good with um, everything that's is abrasives and uh, polishing compounds. Uh, 3M is good as well. It's a bit more expensive, I think. And this is a soft pad if you want to um, go to more complex shapes. So yeah. you can add this on top nice, of, uh, yeah. of this. So for safety, I'll suggest you to wear um, safety goggles. Put on a mask and not like these cheap dust masks because no. that's like not like the one I used. <laughs> yeah, but like for Bondo and so it's okay yeah. if you're not using it too much. But I'm using uh, sanding and cutting daily, so for me it's very important to have a, a good mask. It's just a flange and uh, Barit is going to explain how we're going to add the flange because it's very important. We'll be using resin infusion just to have a nice flange to put the uh, vacuum bag on. So, uh, so since see. we really want to keep the part uh, as big as possible for later uh, easier trimming. Yes, but um, we will still have, I think, this is the yeah, final shape. Yeah, so we this we, is not we the will final cut shape. it like here, but to have as much uh, free space as possible, we want the flange to be mounted something like this. But to better uh, mount it, we will um, we will glue some vertical ribs on here, and then um, we will put the flange like this, so it will be easier. Yeah, uh, so we have like a mount. nice flange, and you yeah. have to imagine like the vacuum bag being right here over the part so, um, so we don't lose anything of the uh, of the part itself and then the, um, the gap will be uh, closed with some uh, plasticine to have a tight um, closure okay so next steps is adding the flange then we're going to spray everything with like a final uh, pattern coat just to have like the nice finish and then uh, we'll continue with the more Done, 
and we later on we will put the flange on but first we will put the top coat on and then we can sand it a little and when it's uh, when it's in nice shape we will put the flange on it yeah. so we will wait for this and now we do the top coat <laughs> the gun just to shoot like the, uh, the top coat so it will be a pattern coat but just going to clean the, uh, the surface so do that before you start painting it because you want to go as quickly from your like your spray to the part because it can cure quite rapidly and to avoid having mistakes we'll do it that way so it's good to wear some gloves um, then you take a a sheet of lint-free cloths just to avoid having some uh, some dust on your part. I'll just fold it. Just be quite generous with it, and then you can apply it and try to remove like all the dust that you have left on your part. So as you can see here, that's already a bit of dust, oh, yeah, yeah. a bit color. So we're preparing now for the last step, so we'll be spraying the pattern coat. So normally you can um, do it by brush, but we'll be using a spray just to get a better finish. So this is something I've been experimenting with the last like, one year, so in the past I did it by brush. Um, but the finish is way more difficult to get right, so now we're aiming for a good result straight out of gun. This is the pattern coat from uh, Easy Composites, and it's a two system, so it's first pattern coat and then a gloss coat. Um, or you can just use this one. The big advantage is that it's very easy to sand, so that's why I like it. Um, and it's like it's a polyester base, so you'll add a like, P harner. Is it the same amount as a normal um, polyester? I would, I would go like, because it's in the gun, I would go way less and I even add some uh, acetone just to thin it down a bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I, I found better. How fast does it take to cure, um, how, or how many, how much time do you have? A, yeah, good question because it's like a big difference, and um, many factors will influence that. That's the amount of MCP hardener you add, the surrounding temperature. So now it's, um, I think we are the 11th of March yeah. or 12th. Um, so it's pretty cold nowadays, and um, I think you should count on one hour, but take like in mind that the pot life will be way less. So the pot life is the, the amount of resin you mix. So mm -hmm. if you mix one kilogram, it will go off quite fast compared to uh, 50 grams or yeah. less. And in the summer, I guess it will be way faster. Yeah, so if you can, go as low as you can with the uh, McP harder. There we go. <laughs> see there are some minor bumps still but we will put a second coat on it and then we will sand it again and normally it will be uh, fine then so now we will let it cure and uh, we'll see you tomorrow If you always want to be up to date with new videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell button as well to get notifications when new videos are being uploaded. If you want to support me, the best way is giving this video a like.